Welcome back, guys. Uh, so today, we're going to be forging some chain. This is chainsaw chain, and I have so much chain laying around. Chainsaw chains, bicycle chains, motorcycle chains, timing chains, chains off giant forklifts. I have so much crap laying around. And uh, while I was at the Maryland Fair, uh, Carrie Stagmer from Baltimore Knife and Sword dropped by because their shop's up the road, so they come to the Renaissance Festival on a regular basis. And we got to discussing forging chain. And I was mentioning how I prefer to you know, put it up in a nice little bundle and weld it closed, you know, weld the edges closed so it has more or less, you know, one immovable piece and then weld it together, forge welds together, that is. And he had mentioned that at their shop, they just use iron wire and bail it all together. And I was kind of skeptical about how well this is going to work for me. So, today we're going to give it a shot. Here's some iron wire and here's some chainsaw chain. We're going to clean this up, wire it together in a bundle, see if we can forge weld it together. So, stick around and we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Here, you can see I have my little bit of chainsaw chain, and I've got it bundled together with iron wires. You can see it's dripping a little bit. That's because I've had it over here in a jug of denatured alcohol. Now, whoa! It's going to you know, make a huge mess, because that's what I do. So one of the first things you want to do is soak some of the, the oil out of the chain, you know, because it gets in between the rivets and stuff like that. You can use acetone. I'm using denatured alcohol here, because this is what I happen to have laying around. Once this is, you know, a little bit degreased and I get some of the funk pulled out from where the, you know, up underneath where the rivets are, then I'm going to soak it in hot water and borax to pull some of the borax into where the rivets are. Then we'll throw it in the forge, warm it up a little bit, oil it down with some WD-40 and borax, then we'll heat it up and try and weld it. All right, now that I've got it degreased, what I've done now is I put it in the forge and warmed it up just to where it's hot enough you can't touch it, and now I've got it soaking in a jug full of really hot water and borax. As much water, there as much borax as I can fit in the water and have it dissolve. So we're gonna let it do that for a few minutes while the forge heats up. And then we'll do a little of the old WD-40 and borax trick before it goes into the forge. So there's that and uh, hold on, we'll get going. All right, what I was doing right there was just cooking off a little bit of the water just to make sure that's nice and dry. We WD-40 it real good. Oh, that's gonna burn, of course. Borax. Borax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm doing is, yes, I know this isn't glowing. It's not hot enough to melt the borax, but what the WD-40 is going to do is liquefy the borax and drag it into all the little nooks and crannies in between the rivets and all the other places in there that you can't get it to when it's not hot. So WD-40 is not the best penetrant in the world, but when you make the borax liquid, it works pretty good. Mmm, smells lovely. Now, it's the forge.
All right, I'm turning the forge off between heats so you can actually hear what I am saying. At this point, now that I'm reasonably sure I've got a solid bar, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set down where I want the transition from the handle to the tanning seat. I'm going to forge this into oh, a bit of a small hunter style knife. And I want it to be full tanning so I can have handle scales on it. It's not going to be the biggest blade ever. Hopefully, it'll be good and functional though. Now, I want to show you a feature really quick of my angle. I ground this this way on purpose. This side has 90 degree corners. Of course, the edges are a bit busted off. I got the angle this way. This side, I ground into a um, compound radius. It's a much tighter round edge right here. This isn't square, it's actually round. And it gets wider and wider and wider over here until you have a nice big round edge. This way, I want to do things like set down the edge of a blade. You never want a 90 degree curve there, or 90 degree corner there, because that creates a stress point where it's going to actually, you know, what's what we call stress riser, where it'll concentrate stress in the blade and actually make it break. You never want a 90 degree corner, especially on a blade. So, this is a bit rough, but this is where our handle is going to be. I'll flip it around, get it back in the fire, start working on our blade. Starting basics of forming a tip. Of course, you know, I've got the tip the wrong direction. That's because I'm fighting a fish mouth. You can see right there, you don't want your material to scoop over like that and create a closed space, what we call fish mouth, because that'll just turn into a crack and break the blade. So next heat, when this is really good and hot, I'll get that tip more straight and get it pushed down the direction it's supposed to be, and I'll start to bevel. We'll see how that works. Bend my handle back up a little bit, points in the right direction. I may end up losing just a little bit off there because this part right here isn't welded, but I can move it. So I'm working on getting this nice and flat and solid. I'm going to start working on some bells. First, I'm going to make sure the parts I'm going to be turning into a blade are actually one piece. Screwy bits in here. That's all right. It's an experiment. It's the first time I've ever done it this way. Let's see how it goes. If it doesn't turn out 100% picture perfect, I'm not gonna crack. But so far, it's looking pretty decent. There's a few spots that are gonna need to be ground out of it, but we haven't gotten there yet. We're still gonna, still nice and thick down here. Pretty thick here. We're going to start beveling this out a little bit. I'm going to set this point down again and then we'll start beveling. Concerns me, but I think that can be ground out. 
But now that I've got the point set down, now we're going to bevel back. Getting there. Alright, so there we go. Here's the blade forged out of chainsaw chain, but it's just bundled together with iron wires. I've never done it before, seemed to work out pretty good. There's a couple little funky spots in here which I did grind out off camera. I took a divot out of here and a couple little divots back here, and then heat it up and, and forge the bevels back out again. You know, just smush it down just a little bit. I didn't show that part on, on, uh, on camera because I didn't think about it. So, But that's how it came out right there. There's a couple little bits in here that are kind of funky, but you know what, I can live with that for the first time uh, doing this, just using iron wire. And this part here is going to get handle scales and all that stuff, so in another video, I will grind this all down, sand it all down, harden it, temper it, acid etch it, put scales on it, and turn it into a finished piece. So thanks for joining me, and if you have any questions, guys, by all means, please feel free to leave them in the comments below, and uh, have a wonderful day.